everyone, I'm Kelsey from Wearable Whisperer, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Fossil Gen 5 smartwatch with an Android phone. So to start, you'll need the charger that came in the box. You'll want to attach the circular magnetic side to the back of the watch. Basically just turn this around and attach it anywhere. And go ahead and turn that to the side. And then the other end, which is the USB type A, you'll plug into a power source. So I've got a portable charger here. So I've got that plugged in and momentarily we should see the fossil logo appear on the Gen 5 smart watch. All right, so let me try one more thing. I'm going to press this button for a few seconds. Okay, I felt a little vibration and there we go. So I had actually already manually turned this off because I had some setup issues before. So I guess if you're doing the same thing, you might have to press and hold this center button. So the fossil logo is appearing on my watch face and in the meantime, it's going to go through this little animation. And my experience with this animation so far is that it takes minutes to finish doing what it's doing. So in the meantime, what is supposed to happen, you need to find the Google Play Store. So that's the icon we're looking for. If you don't already have that, you can uh, access all of your apps on the Google Pixel 3a. I'm going to press and hold this little circle button in the middle and swipe up. And then I need to find Play Store. There it is. So go ahead and tap on Play Store. And over here on the watch face, we are getting the Wear OS logo. And then I'll go ahead and tap here in the search bar and search for Wear OS. So I'll just go ahead and tap the search icon here. And there it says Wear OS by Google Smartwatch, Google LLC. So I'll go ahead and tap on Install. And over here on the watch face, it says Tap to Begin. So I'll go ahead and tap here while we're waiting for that to install. Tap again. Here we have a list of languages. Looks like they're ordered alphabetically, so you can scroll wherever to find your language. I'm going to choose English United States, so I'm going to tap here. And I'm going to go ahead and go back here on the Wear OS phone, on the phone, and tap open to open the Wear OS app. So here it says Wear OS by Google, start setup. If you don't have a watch, you can also explore Wear OS by Google, but we have a watch, so let's go ahead and tap start setup. So here we got terms of service. By continuing, you agree to the Google terms of service and the terms below. Also have a privacy policy. You can click on either of these blue links to read more. There's fitness data and automatic updates. You can also tap on these down arrows to read more. So it's talking about how Google collects, stores, and processes information. So you can read through those. You'll also tap here and read through the automatic update information. And if you agree, go ahead and tap Agree. Now here it's asking about Make Wear OS Better. Send diagnostic reports and usage stats to Google to improve your watch's performance, battery life, and features. It won't be used to identify you. So you can either opt out by saying no thanks or opt in by saying I agree. For now, I'm going to say no thanks. Now connect your watch. Tap your watch name when it appears in the list. So I'm going to go back here to the screen, tap to wake it up, and agree here to the terms of use. I'm not really sure why you have to do that on both your phone and the watch, but okay. And so it says link with Wear OS by Google, Juliana HR, and that is this watch. You'll see it says on your phone, download and open Wear OS by Google. This little arrow indicates there's more, so I'm going to scroll up. 
in the Wear OS app, connect to this watch name, Juliana HR0824. So that is the same name, so I'll go ahead and tap on it. So now it's trying to connect. It says a prompt to connect will appear on this phone, and there we go. Pair with Juliana HR, Bluetooth pairing code, allow access to your contacts and call history. Pixel 3a would like to connect, the code matches. I'm gonna keep this unchecked just for now. And I'll go ahead and tap pair. So it says connected on both the phone and the watch. It says getting your watch details. This may take a few minutes. And here we have a progress bar, it seems. It's moving from left to right. And the dark blue indicates how far along the progress of setting up this watch is. So that was a big jump there. And it says we're already ready. So it's saying choose which Google accounts to copy to your watch and download apps and get the most from your watch by copying an account. So I can either, I have two accounts showing up here. I can keep them both checked. I can check them both off. Um, I'm gonna disable one of them, keep the other one enabled. You can also skip if you don't wanna connect anything. So I'll go ahead and tap next. And it seems like it's connecting to my account. Okay, so copy to your watch. Copy your Google accounts to your Juliana HR. I guess that's something I need to do if I want the accounts to be connected. So I'll go ahead and tap copy. So verify to you, unlock to continue setting up your device. Touch fingerprint sensor, so I gotta lift this up. All right. So it's copying my accounts. Okay, now it's asking me to enter my password for my Google account. So go ahead and enter your password. All right, so once you've entered your password, go ahead and tap sign in. All right, so on the watch here, it says accounts copied, so that's a good sign. Stay connected to Wi-Fi. Get notifications, send messages, and use apps on the go. Connect your watch to Wi-Fi using the Wear OS by Google Cloud Sync. All right, so this is step two of five, connecting to Wi-Fi, I guess. So let's go ahead and tap connect. Wi-Fi enabled. Okay, chat with your friends, manage calls, sync your contacts, and send messages from your watch. So if you wanna do any of these things, you'll have to tap next, otherwise you can skip, but I'll go ahead and tap next. Allow Wear OS by Google to access your contacts, allow or deny, I'll go ahead and tap allow. Allow Wear OS by Google to manage, make and manage phone calls. So I'll go ahead and say allow for that also. And allow to access your phone call logs. I assume that's so you can respond to a call on your watch. So I guess I'll go ahead and say allow. And allow to send a view text messages. So I'll go ahead and say allow there also. All right, contacts added. Check your calendar to see your agenda and get event notifications, sync your phone's calendar. So again, you can skip. I'll go ahead and tap next. So now you're given permission to access your calendar. I'll go ahead and say allow. Calendar synced. Get notifications at a glance. Keep your phone in your pocket. Allow your watch to display notifications sent to your phone. I definitely like that, so I'm gonna tap allow. Allow notification access for Wear OS by Google. Wear OS by Google will be able to read all notifications, including personal information such as contact names and the text of the messages you receive. It will also be able to dismiss notifications or trigger action buttons they contain. This will also give the app the ability to turn do not disturb on or off and change related settings. So that's all pretty typical stuff. If you want notifications on your watch, that's just something that has to be done because you need to see who sent the text what the message actually is and things like that. So I'm okay with that. I'll go ahead and tap allow. So notifications enabled. And location notice. Your watch may use the location from your phone or the watch GPS if available. To prevent your watch from using any location information, turn off location in your watch settings. This will keep your watch from using location information from your phone as well as GPS on your watch. Okay, I'll go ahead and say next. Seems like location's on by default here. 
And now it says finishing up. This may take up to five minutes. So again, we have a little progress bar here. And I'm kind of glad there's a progress bar here so we can see how long it might take. Five minutes is actually not that long considering I've done some Fitbit and Apple Watch setups that have taken significantly longer. So it's always nice to see that little progress bar indicator. And if this is your first setup video you ever watched on my channel. Um, I'll just say here that I do tend to do real time videos, even if they might be a little boring at this type, this part of the video, because I just believe in showing you the exact setup experience that you might also experience in real time. So I don't like to skip these steps because I think you should really be able to see exactly what the setup entails and your experience will probably be similar to mine in that it will take some time to get this setup installed. So just want to give you the experience so you either know what to expect or if you're following along then you know that somebody else had to go through the same waiting period to get their watch set up as well. So looks like we're here around the almost to the 50% and we don't have any feedback on the watch display which is fine but and I think it is important for the fossils here to to be charging during the setup I've heard that the setup experience can really drain the bat battery quickly, so it's good to keep that charging during the setup. Now Google doesn't actually tell us that we can use our phone at this time. I would venture to guess that you probably could, but I'm obviously not going to for the sake of this video. But. So yeah, there's no like, I think both Fitbit and Apple give you a little bit of a something to do while you're waiting that helps you learn more about your watch, I guess. So tab Apple kind of goes through the, the ways to interact with your watch, talking about the digital crown, the side button and things, whereas Fitbit is telling you about all the features that are on the watch. And here on the Fossil Gen 5, we just have to wait with anticipation I guess. <laughs> We're not really given any extra information. But it does seem like the progress bar is moving along at a steady pace. We don't have any stuck at 50% type things like I've experienced with Fitbit for sure. So. <laughs> That at least gives me some optimism that this won't take too much longer to complete. And it looks like we're almost 90% here. Seems like we're about done. And there we go says you're all set. Finish set up on your phone. I'll go ahead and tap done. Now it says completing setup on the watch. And here we have a image of our watch. Check mark, you're all set on the watch. And there's our little first look at the clock face. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the watch here for a moment. It says Welcome to Wear OS. Learn more. And maybe I'll go ahead and bring this up closer for you. So if I tap, I'll go ahead and tap on Learn More. Swipe in each direction. All right, so I guess I'll start from the top down. So it looks like they're not telling us what this is, but it looks like we can see if Bluetooth is connected. We see our battery percentage. 
got some quick settings here. We got full settings and I guess I'll go over what these are in a different video because I still have to learn them myself. If I swipe in another direction, we get some things here. Okay, it's kind of funny. Swipe left to discover your tiles. Okay, well at least it's kind of telling me what there is here. So I guess we have tiles here. Okay. And then down, I got a notification it looks like. Okay, so it's all me to, it says tutorial, one minute, I'm no notification, tap to expand. So I guess we're gonna tap on this. Tap to close, tap again to collapse a notification. And there's also a clear all button here. So I guess we'll go ahead and tap it again. And it says swipe to dismiss. I thought uh, I just tapped it to close, but okay. So I guess we swipe to the right. Okay, back to watch. Swipe down to go back to the watch face. Okay. Oh, okay, press button for apps. So we'll go ahead and press the button here. Press again to go back. Change the watch face, touch and hold. All right, so I'll touch and hold. And they don't tell us here, but it looks like, yeah, you just swipe, because you can't swipe too much or you go too far. So you can swipe and you can add another watch face there, or it looks like you can access some watch face settings here. So you can probably customize these complications. Enable phone call audio on this device, okay. So, phone call audio, sure. Well, I know there's some battery considerations here, so I'm actually gonna say no for now. I'm sure I can always change that later. Uh, so now I'm a little lost as to where I was before. I'm hoping I can just, there we go, I tap the button, okay, so. I've got that part down. Looks like our little tutorial just finished. So, and there's the an example of the always on display. So after that timeout, this is what the always on display looks like. It's pretty faint as you can tell here. So time will tell whether I like this always on display or not, but I'll be sure to let you know how I feel about this watch in a future video. So. With that, I'm going to start learning Wear OS, and I'll make future videos to help you out also. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up below as it really helps this channel and my video. And consider subscribing if you want to see more Fossil Gen 5 videos, Fitbit and Apple Watch videos, and other wearable content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.